Okay, now we're done on this side. We'll flip this over. Hey there everyone, Jeff here. Welcome back to Imagination Tech. So I've been building different kinds of batteries for different applications from 4S, uh, this is a 6S 18650 battery pack. I've built 4S, I built 5S, I built 2S for my radio as well as my, uh, my goggles. And uh, I've built a 10S battery pack for my um, electric skateboard, electric longboard. I've also built a 7S 7P, sorry, no, that was, that's a 7S 13P battery for my solar generator. But today we are going to be using these Molycell P42A um, cells. These are 21700 4000 milliamp hour batteries. So I've used VTC6 for the 18650 batteries. Uh, and those deliver 3000 milliamp hours and uh, packs actually a good uh, a healthy amount of current at I think 15 amps. But I prefer the VTC5A. It has slightly less capacity at 2600 milliamp hours, but it packs a punch I think at up to, up to 25 amps I think. So today we are going to, be, going to be using these P42A to build something a little bit bigger, a little bit heavier. It is a 6S pack made from some of these. I've already built one and I'm going to take you step by step on how I built this thing. Stay tuned. batteries in the past couple of years and it's actually pretty easy so we're going to be doing this step by step and the first step is to check if the your batteries that you bought are actually in a good condition so uh, we just check first if they are um, approximately the same voltage you even if there's a small voltage difference it doesn't matter so you're expecting your batteries to be around 3.7 3.8 maybe 3.85 max um, for brand new cells like these um, and you shouldn't be receiving them fully charged. They should be around storage voltage. I've already checked these cells, these cells check out. So the next thing is we're going to be putting them in their holders. So today we're going to be using holders like these, which are 3D printed. I'll post a link in the description below. All right, so it is the first time I'm actually going to be using this 3D printed spacer. I've, I have used spacers that are store-bought before from Shopee. The only purpose of these spacers is to create the space and to create a more rigid structure. But I have also built batteries you know, uh, without these spacers. And the advantage of that is you can build it more compact and they have held up pretty nicely. This is going to be my uh, the positive of my whole pack. So it's the positive going down here, then going up here, then going down here, connecting to the other side, and then going up here, connected to that, going down here, connected to there, and going back up. So we are actually going to be uh, doing a lot more on the other side. But uh, for now, let's get started on this one. Oops. So now we've done this side, we are going to put that cap back on and flip it over so that we can work on the other side. You have to be very careful because if you accidentally put your nickel strips on the second side in the wrong place, it will cause sparks to fly. So you just, uh, you know, be careful where you put your nickel strips. So if I accidentally put this nickel strip across these two, we are going to see some sparks and Unfortunately, that's not going to be part of uh, today's demonstration. By the way, if you don't have a spot welder, you can always use uh, you know, a soldering iron like this one. I have a link in the description for this uh, specific iron, or rather the successor to this iron. This is the DS100, and I think it's now been succeeded by a TS101. But like I always say, you use the right tool for the right job. And this costs just some anywhere from 18 to $30. So depending on where you buy it from, um, and it's, it's what I've been using since. Okay, so now we need to 
figure out where we're going to connect our uh, balance wires, balance lead, or balance connector. So you can see that there is a hole here up on top. And what we want to do, probably, I, I'm, I'm, I'm figuring this out as we go. Um, but yeah, uh, we're, I'm thinking of threading, threading this uh, down through here. But this thing is a little bit short. It's uh, shorter than what I what I used to uh, buy. So, so normally I would want my balance connector to be like a, at least an inch away from the whole battery pack. So it's something like this. But if I'm going to be doing it like that, let's say something like that, the red wire, which goes to the positive one, has to you know it's it just it's it's it it just reaches just barely reaches i mean i could just you know just solder it to uh the end and it won't make much of a difference and then the second wire needs to go all the way down through there through the middle go all the way up to here and this is where we'll solder it so i'm going to need to extend these wires so these are the wires that i need to be up on top these are the four wires up on top and these three wires I would need to extend because they would need to reach to the bottom. One of the tricks I use so that I avoid uh, putting too much heat onto my um, cells is to create a folded tab like this, a uh, nickel strip. I have solder on here on the other side and I would solder my leads here. And then after I'm done with that, I would just spot weld it here. And we really want to prevent uh, too much heat getting transferred to our cells so that they are in their pristine condition. So now we just spot weld this on. So assembling this thing is a bit more challenging because of the solid cap. Unlike if the ones that I normally build is just with a heat shrink so it's all pretty loose until you apply heat to the heat shrink and this one it's yeah it's, it's a lot more complicated and you have to push and pull and then we're gonna have to figure out how to uh pull the some of the wires that we threaded through in the middle out on the other side <laughs> here's one of the challenges i was mentioning um the wires are getting stuck and not going through those holes because these these holes are really damn tiny so i'm not really sure how I'm, I'm gonna get those wires out okay by some form of miracle we were able to get one of the wires out so this is actually the easier one because on the other other hole we're going to be needing to thread two of them so we'll probably maybe we'll solder the two wires together so that they come out as one unit but for now, we'll just solder this in and that will prevent it from going back out. Now we're securing this and securing our winds. So at least for this wire, at least, we've got it, we've got it there. We can put this bottom cap on. This is a pain in the ass, so if you want an easy build, stick with just a uh, regular spacers and or something like this uh, heat shrink. It's much, much easier to build than using this hard, hard plastic uh, end caps. So to check if we have everything um, connected properly, we just need to check the leads. This should give us yeah, it's right around 22.8, which is storage voltage for a 6S. We need to check on each cell as well. So each cell is around 3.8. So the first step is 3.8. 3.85 is right, right around that number. So each step, uh, you add another 3.7 or 3.8. And if that doesn't happen, then that means you wired something up incorrectly and now we just need to zip tie these things up probably add some more hot glue around here but let me zip tie this first see if uh it's secure enough or it's 
stable enough. It took me quite a while to figure out how the designer um, fashioned his zip ties onto this thing. I think this is how he did it. So he slid one zip tie here and then another zip tie uh, through that uh, through that first zip tie and then just cut off and then just to keep the, the lock on that. So there are six zip ties all around, uh, which means I used up 12 for you know another six for the locks here at the bottom. But this thing is quite secure. Um, and these are pretty thick zip ties as well. These are the 110 millimeter with uh, heat shrinks. And right now it looks like an explosive device. So I probably would not bring this on a plane, but yes. Uh, so that's, if you prefer having a heat shrink, this is how it will look like. Just to set our baseline, this is a GNB 1380 milliamp hour LiPo. This is also a 6S and it comes around 225 grams. And this one is a 4000 milliamp hour pack coming in at around 444.5. Let's just call it 450 grams. And you know, this thing is twice the weight of your regular 6S LiPo, but it has thrice the energy density with 4000 milliamp hour uh, milliamp hour of capacity when put on an appropriate quad perhaps a seven inch uh, quad this will really take you you know really really long distance and it's going to be perfect for long range uh, flights six hours later so after a hard landing which wasn't really that hard um, the quad went dead and this was not delivering any power I checked the voltage on this thing. Yeah, so it wasn't giving, it's not giving me any power. Um, and if we measure one of these cells, it's also not delivering anything. And that tells us that we have a disconnected cell. So there was a bit of a foreshadowing earlier. Probably add some more hot glue. So what we're going to do now is we're going to open this up. Uh, one of these, uh, tabs or one of these uh, tin strips uh, came loose and that could have happened for a number of reasons but one possibility is that since we didn't have any hot glue or tape these things could have moved and could have uh, this could have, that could have gotten loose because of the, uh, you know vibrations or movement like that so even if it was you know tied securely with, with, with zip ties and had an end cap it's there is as you can see there is still the possibility of um, up and down movement by each of those cells so I've put some electrical tape around the cells and that secured them from uh, any more movement now there are pros and cons using electrical tape the first pro is that it's a little bit stronger uh, than hot glue hot glue is more sensitive to not just uh, movement and vibration but also to temperature as well obviously it's sticky when it's hot when it, you know thermal differences would cause it to loosen its grip on whatever it's attached to so um, the downside of using electrical tape is that I really don't like the sticky residue that you know that, that it leaves if, uh, if you have electrical tape on here for a long time and especially with heat the adhesive of electrical tape usually sticks to uh, the surface so um, I have my probes on here if I press here on the terminal, it goes up to 24.6 volts. So that really indicates that it's really just this that's uh, the problem. So having that, uh, you know, closing that connection um, makes it the 6S battery again. So we're just going to have to fix uh, these tabs, reinforce them, um, and we should be good to go. This was full charge, but it's somehow it's appearing as 24.9 in flight until it's 18 volts or 3 volts per second. that is going to be it for this video I hope you found this very useful and I hope you got a lot of information out of it so I'm going to leave you with that um, if you found this information this video very useful consider sending me a coffee I have my patreon and coffee link down in the description below
make sure you're also subscribed and hit the like button and click that bell button as well so you get notified when I put out new videos, all right? So I'm going to be leaving you with that. As always, keep building and keep flying.